Hey everybody, it is day two of Camp Colt, and today I am looking at a, you know, what I guess maybe I'd consider, probably a lot of people consider to be a brand new classic to the horror genre, and that's Hereditary. Uh, if this is a movie you haven't seen, and you are really into kind of bone, like, chilling type of horror, this is the movie for you. It's not really, like, scary. Like, the, the best thing I love about this movie is the music and the way that it uses sounds and the way that the sounds create tension. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's not the only thing to love about this movie. Tony Collette is absolutely fabulous in this movie, and yes, she was robbed. She should have been nominated at least for an Oscar. She didn't even get nominated for this role, and she is so good. Like, so good. Ridiculously good. Everybody is really good in this movie. Uh, Gabriel Byrne is fantastic. Um, uh, his last, his first name escapes me. I think it's Adam Wolf, uh, who plays the son, is really good. Even the person, the little girl that plays the daughter, even though she's in it as much as she is, she's still really good. Kind of that weird, creepy, like, factor. Um, if you don't know the story, I'm not going to give too much away. Um, and if you know the movie, you know why it's a cult movie. Uh, not just like a cult classic or anything like that. Like it's a movie to center around cults. So basically you start the movie and uh, Tony Collette's mother has died. And she doesn't really know how to kind of feel about that whole situation. And she also has a lot of problems to where she creates like little dioramas. And that's the way that she actually deals with all of her problems. And she's constantly building them throughout the movie for different scenes and different things that have happened. Uh, you have her daughter, uh, who is what she considered to be, like, she even tells her right in the beginning of the movie that she was grandma's favorite, uh, and she always took care of her. And one of the creepy lines she says, well, who's going to take care of me when you die? Like, she knows something is up. Um, things kind of go way out of hand, uh, relatively quick. It is very shocking. I'm not going to say what it is. You probably know, I mean, this movie came out in 2018, and I don't really want to spoil something, even if it's from 2018, at least when it comes to this movie, because it's still a shock. It's a shock when I rewatched it again. I remember the first time I watched it, I had no idea what was going on. I tried to avoid everything that had to do with this movie, because I knew that it was a movie I wanted to see, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to actually go into the theater and see it. And I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a theater movie, like you have to go, you need to be in the theater to see this movie because it's so fantastic. Um, I bet you the sounds would be a lot more heightened. I mean, they're still heightened as they are at home. Um, it's actually pretty crazy how well the mood is set just by the atmosphere and just by the music that is used. Yeah, sometimes it gets in that jump scare type of territory, but uh, Ari Aster... He is just magnificent when it comes to, like, filming these tension-filled scenes. And it kind of sucks that we're not really going to see another, like, real horror movie. Maybe he'll come back to it. Um, you know, he did two, in my opinion, two really, really good horror movies. Um, with this one being kind of the dark of the two, and the other one being the light of the two. And so, it's... I, I don't want to give stuff away. It goes to a really unexpected place at the end of the movie. I was really, really surprised. Like I said, what happens about, I'd say about 40 minutes in the movie, maybe even sooner than that. Maybe it's more like 30 minutes in the movie. It's crazy that this movie is as long as it is um, because I really don't feel it. And every time you feel like you're getting close to the end, you realize there's still a long way to go. Um, there's a great seance scene that happens uh, at about an hour and uh, I'd say about an hour and 15 minutes into the movie. Um, there are some really freaky things that go on at the school with the sun. One of them is in the trailer that's there. Like you see it, but actually to see it at, in the way of the film, it's really, really well done. And it, the it's just the angles that he uses in certain scenes, uh, how he jumps around in, in the view of, you know, from focusing on the characters to something weird kind of happening off in the distance, really quick cuts. Um, and there's a lot of stuff, too. There's one scene where the son is looking outside and he sees that in like the treehouse. And this is not really giving anything away. Uh, there's like a light 
right? It's a red light. It's very red compared to everything. And it's not like, oh, there's like candles and stuff like there. It's like a deep, deep red. And the way that he's looking at it, and you can tell he's just looking at it, but the reflection of the light is hitting his eyes and like right at the pupil of his eyes so that the red is there. But when he shifts, like it disappears. And then he looks back on it and the red is really focused in his eyes. It's really, really fucking cool. And it's definitely suspenseful. Now, is it for everybody? I don't know, to be honest with you. Uh, I think that if you really like these type of like a little bit of slow burn, but not terribly slow burn like type of horror movies, you're really going to like this movie. Um, it is an A24 film, and I know how some people feel, and I feel kind of the same way a lot of their movies, but I think this is a horror movie that you really need to check out. And, you know, it's kind of labeled in there, but I feel like it's a little bit more than your standard horror movie. Uh, it has a very fantastic ending and very, very creepy ending to this film. Um, again, can't say much more about it, but I feel that it wraps everything up really, really well on that creep factor. And man, I if I could experience this movie again for the very first time, I would be fit, like, I would love it. Um, because even watching it here at home, even for the second time, I'm still enthralled by the movie, and I just I absolutely love this film. Um, this is a film that possibly one day could make the podcast, but it'd be very, very rough, because I feel like you need to see the visuals to kind of get along with the way the movie moves itself. Um, even though it's not much, I mean, the best thing I can say is like you are actually in the dioramas that she is creating, right? And you're just seeing everything come to life even though we've already experienced it. So uh, I hope you guys have so far have enjoyed these first two little short videos. Uh, there's a ton more to come, <laughs> one a day that we're going to do it. And uh, don't forget to check out the podcast if you haven't already. And then at the end of this, you should see uh, the latest video, the last day that was put on it, as well as a playlist that you can watch all the videos that were associated in this 31 and 31. So thank you guys so much for watching, those that do. And I can't wait to talk about to tomorrow's movie. I'll see you later.